were you doing down there? I was trying to help the American Revolution. So why did the papers claim you were loaded? Uh, well, the papers, with their delicate sense of inaccuracy, were absolutely right when they said I was loaded. But I was loaded oh. two days before the march. The day of the march, I was absolutely sober. Ah. I was drunk when I appeared in the theater. But I was drunk in my own way, which meant that I was highly sober and uh, more intelligent than usual. I, I used a great many uh, four-letter words. I read that. Appearance in the theater. And I did it for a good reason. I wanted to make a point. Uh, the point I wanted to make is that we get terribly agitated about entertainers and authors being obscene in public. But we're engaged in a war which is so obscene that one minute in the life of General Westmoreland is more obscene than all the dirty words and all the dirty books that American authors have ever put together. Think about it, dear American people out there. You hear him, Helen? And there is an element in women's liberation that terrifies me. It terrifies me because it's humorless, because with the exception, let's say, of Germaine Greer's book on, on, on the female eunuch, there's been almost no recognition that the life of a man is also difficult, and that all the horrors that women go through, some of them absolutely determined by men, even more of them, I suspect, determined by themselves, because we must face the simple fact that it may be there's a profound reservoir of cowardice in women which had them welcome this miserable, slavish life. But in any case, whether it's their fault or men's fault, what has to be recognized is there's nothing automatic about female liberty. Every female liberty is going to be achieved the way every liberty is achieved, which is it's going to be achieved against the grain, against the paradox of the fact that there's much in human life which forbids liberty. So I'm not here to say that every woman must have a child, or every woman must have a vaginal orgasm, or that every woman must conceive in any way that I lay down. Anyone who says that about me just doesn't know how to read my sentences. What I'm trying to say is, let's really get hip about this little matter and recognize that the whole question of women's liberation is the deepest question that faces us, and we're going to go right into the very elements of existence and eternity before we're through with it. Because the whole question of how much liberty men and women can find with each other and how much sharing of those dishes that they can do goes into the center of everything. And I'd like the discussion to go at that level. I'm perfectly willing, if you wish me to act the clown, I will take out my modest little Jewish dick and put it on the table. You can all spit at it and laugh at it, and then I'll, and then I'll walk away and you'll find it was just a dildo I left there. I hadn't shown you the real one. But if we're going to have a decent discussion, we all got here tonight at great various efforts to ourselves, let's have it on the highest level we can. How could you marry Regency? How could you marry him? I feel so sorry for you, Tim. Are you that miserable with Patty Lorraine? Yes. I gather she's paying your way. A little agreement, whatever I make for my writing, goes to her. Do you write much? Maybe you are a bartender after all. Maybe I am. You chose Patty Lorraine. I hope you're happy because I am. Mr. Regency and I make out five times a night. That's what I call him, Mr. Five. Cheers. My husband is having an affair with your wife. I don't think we should talk about it. Unless you're prepared to kill them. Oh, man. Oh, God. 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 I was called up and asked in an interview, um, why do you think that the CIA was uh, so had so little... Uh, presence in those Arab countries. Why did they know so little? Why didn't they, why wasn't their intelligence better? And I said, I, you know, it was, maybe it was a smart ass remark, but I said, uh, well, you know, they all speak Arabic over there and we Americans are not good at foreign languages. <laughs> and it's true, it's true. It, um, most Americans, um, the majority of Americans have a hell of a time with foreign languages because we've got a language that's so comfortable. And we don't, and it this doesn't seem much reason to us to move away from that language and learn other languages. And we don't want to learn that much about other cultures. And there's a kind of dumbing down of the American culture. Uh, heroism by itself is maybe the most important single 
a human characteristic in a war, but they're all the collateral virtues, and, and they are immensely important. And one of them is the development of, of minds that can reason finely and, and subtly and, and um, with flexibility, and that we don't have. We're not strong on that. I repeat, we're a country that hates questions that take longer than 10 seconds to answer. President Bush, bless him, and I use that in the southern sense, you know, like, like <laughs> grandma saying, you know, I don't think that girl has clean underwear, bless her. <laughs> so, President George Bush, bless his heart, <laughs> doesn't like questions that take longer than 10 seconds to answer. He uses the word evil 14 times in a speech, and he couldn't begin to tell you what any of the philosophers have ever wrestled over with the question of evil. Is evil nothingness, or is evil an element that's uh, filled with attractiveness? That's one of the very first questions that, with which you approach evil, and so forth. 